everyone we begin our session our episode of video podcast today and this is an amazing time and amazing day because i have a very very esteemed guest on this show to talk to you share her experiences before i invite the guest i would like to arouse some curiosity in all of you i hope you are also eagerly waiting who is that guest well she is the founder of mind app coaching and consulting mindset and leadership coach a human behavior strategist and someone who has changed and transformed her path from being a working professional and then starting a fulfilling journey which has made her reach millions and you know across people so let us welcome vandana mahotre to this amazing video podcast welcome vandana so thank you dr vijayata <laughs> thank you so much i'm so excited to be here and to be talking to you and connecting with all of your audience thank you so much for having me i am super excited to have this you know conversation with you on this amazing podcast i would like you to share a bit about how this transformation journey of being a working professional to moving this uh, uh, i would say coaching industry how this transformation journey happened for you sure thank you for that amazing question but first of all i have to say dr vijayata you have such an infectious energy uh you know you you just your presence and the smile it's it's just transferring on to me as well and i'm loving it um so thank you for that now regarding my journey so i started i mean i'm from nagpur originally from nagpur um and that's where i i i, I grew up uh, that's where i got educated and um, i did my engineering so while i was growing up uh, in the school i i was a good student um but there was more i was always more interested in sports uh, i wanted to become a cricketer really frankly if you ask me and i had all the support i needed wow from my family um, you know they they said okay if that's what you want to pursue it's just that i didn't have a really, really good role model and i didn't know what to do so i thought you know i might as well do something else some safe profession as you call you know you know we know in, in india it's you become an engineer a doctor or a lawyer to you know to begin with or then later do mba uh, so that is what i thought about that okay you know if you are getting good grades why not do engineering and that's how i got into engineering but right from day right from day one i knew that that's not what where my heart is mm-hmm. um, i knew about that but at the same time i knew that it's going to give me a safe future so i kept doing i mean i did as much as i can i applied myself and got through in campus uh interviews i got a job with hsbc and i started working and the journey started and it did bring i mean don't get me wrong it gave me everything i'm so grateful for all that journey and i spent 10 years in it but all through while i was looking for i knew that there is something else that i'm supposed to do i just couldn't pinpoint what it was um and that curiosity was there in me that i know i could identify what aspects i like so it was always about working with people it it was always people always got me really curious um, how they behave in certain situation what is the way they think uh, how they respond what changes their reaction what are their mindsets what helps people succeed what pulls them back i was always looking at uh, learning from everyone from this perspective and even in the job though i was a software professional i started as a java programmer uh, and moved on into you know systems analyst and then uh, team lead positions i was always put into the fire projects you know the burning projects uh, so as to just bring in the calmness reestablish trust you know build relationships and and still deliver uh, the software program or the project so there were always these aspects in my job that those were introduced because people did observe that you know those are the skills that i bring mm-hmm. so i always thought maybe hr is the natural uh, progression for me because coaching wasn't a known industry at that point in time mm-hmm. um, so i i just thought maybe because i love people i ultimately will do my mba and get an hr uh, you know degree or get an hr education and then get into the relevant field 
um but working in the corporate for so long i knew hr is not just about the aspect that i think there is a lot more that needs to be done you know there's this recruitment there's this paperwork there's so many tasks behind and they were not those were not the thing that ever interested me and that's the reason i never ended doing mm-hmm. my post graduation mm-hmm. uh but frankly i kept a fund safe fund i kept saving for my post graduation because i knew i meant to study i just didn't know what so the the search was on and it took more of looking within than looking out uh but also being curious of what other people are doing uh people who are similar to me what are they doing what are they going after but it was actually by accident that i discovered about coaching um while while we were in the us uh when my son was born we took a break i took a break i decided to go on a conscious career break Mm-hmm. I said you know I want to be with my little one and that was a time when I got to be with myself too I discovered bits about me that I didn't know um and you know how it was to just cut off yourself from that doing 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 bit and following the same way and then allowing yourself to think of what are the things are possible for you and during that time uh, I bumped into a life coach I didn't know she was a life coach um uh, I bumped into her and there was something about her that just uh it it took my attention and i got really interested in you know what is she what is she doing what does she do um uh, and for, for whatever reason she also had connected with me on facebook immediately it doesn't doesn't happen like that we just met once mm-hmm. and she also connected with me on on facebook mm-hmm. and i started looking through her profile and i saw that she had done some life coaching training and then from there on i started clicking on and and and, and I, i was researching researching and i realized that you could learn to become a life coach and there is an industry like coaching uh where you 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 work on you you become human behavior specialist you study um and you figure out all these coaching exercises models patterns of asking questions and how to be present how to listen intentionally uh and that you could build up on those skills and and then start working in that space so i decided that's what i want to do whenever i step back into Uh, you know going back to work that's what i will do and we we were moving to australia at that point in time so once we moved here we moved here in april and in may i had already signed up uh, i i you know i signed up for a three year long course uh, with the coaching institute here and i said this is what i want to do i know for a fact that this is all, you know i was waiting for this all my life until now and now that i have found it i don't want to waste a single moment so i just you know i enrolled with them and i was still working but i was still studying with them um and i started volunteering on the side to exercise you know what we think about a certain thing versus when we actually do it might be two different things so i wanted to see how it feels when i start working actually working on the ground and dr vijay i have to tell you i never ever felt so fulfilled in my life ever uh to be able to finally align with who i am and to be contributing to the world the way i really wanted to and that's how the journey started wow so this is this is such an amazing you know uh, journey and experience which you have shared being uh, into a full time uh, job and then that self actualization seeping in slowly and slowly and finding its way wonder here i would you know uh, ask you one question which which uh, when you were speaking it just came in uh, and i would like to know you shared that when you were working still you were busy experiencing and finding that purpose of yours you continuously worked on that purpose finding for you and you also mentioned that you had a mentor or a coach or a course what you did so if you can throw some light because these days people uh, what i feel is uh, finding the right mentor is one thing people are really struggling with mm-hmm. so what aspects kept you going when you were uh, working and finding your purpose or or traversing that journey parallelly you know being a full time mom full time professional and still continuously working towards your purpose that's such an amazing question uh, dr vijayta and i i still wonder i wonder what it is really but i always had that voice inside of me mm-hmm. um and i remember being like a little kid and 
and feeling some kind of a connection like i used to look up and feel like there's you know there's somebody somebody over there uh not in a judgmental way but but like in a really very very caring nurturing way to be like you know just um i don't know what to say but i would always feel this energy and i had these i won't say i had a clear picture i didn't have a, an image but i had this knowing that i am supposed to be doing something else okay. that knowing and that knowing is what i was chasing that what is that something else i know it's not this because otherwise i would have known it's you know i would have felt it but then if it's not this then what is it um so that's that that inner whisper which i think all of us maybe we do have it but we don't give ourselves the chance to listen to um and i i cannot be more thankful for the blessed family that i had and the upbringing and the environment that i was given um uh, and that i was that i came into that probably i was into that space where i wasn't occupied in my thoughts i was living mindfully like being present or most of the times and maybe that's where it all started from that that knowing uh that i was meant to be doing something else and the the insane curiosity i cannot tell you if you ask all of my friends all will tell you that you know at some point in time she won't die until she does her mba that's what they used to call because they all knew that i i'm just so curious about what is what can i do what can i do there has to be something else um while while i say that um uh, even though i was curious it didn't mean that i didn't do my job well never ever because i knew this is what i'm doing right now and i need to be giving my 100% uh but that doesn't stop me from exploring myself uh so it was it was all in parallel um and to tell you i was trying to get aspects of my current job whatever i was working in i was trying to figure what part of it really attracts me more so i was trying to path of like make a way so i i knew that i loved sports what about sports is that i love then i realized that uh being with people being in a team being so present because when you're playing i played cricket so when you're playing you're facing the ball you cannot be thinking of anything else you're so present um so i knew that it's it's that energy that you're absolutely present you are with people uh you're connected on a very different level uh you're working together as a team so i knew that's the aspect i loved about sports i knew when i was served in the it industry that i love being part of a team doing a project together it's n- was never about what i am achieving it was always about what we are achieving as a team as an organization and 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 that's why i kept getting opportunities and i met these incredible people who were also displaying similar qualities but i saw that when they were very passionate like i had a few managers a few team members who were extremely passionate about the work they would go back home and read more about it research more about it you know how how when you want to grow and i always wondered why it doesn't happen with me uh i'm doing my job well but why don't i go home and read about java structures or you know how i can uh, implement a code better why don't i do that so it used to bother me and i thought it's only because i didn't judge myself for that but i thought it's because i didn't find what i love doing yet so there was that word yet i knew it's it's going to happen some day it hasn't happened till now so i so i kept looking 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 till the point i got here and it was clear that i was waiting for it okay so how how did you find the right mentor when you were yes yeah so about mentoring uh, as you mentioned throughout my journey even when i didn't know about coaching i um, i think it started way early in school life i would say um, this was when i was probably 8 years old and i had changed schools and um, I, i was this shy girl um who didn't know who was still figuring out things right i was trying to build up my confidence around in a new place new friends um and i remember a teacher of mine pointing out for some march pass you remember the march pass that we used to do for national you know annual days and stuff and then he figured out that i am good at it and he told our uh, pt instructor instructor that uh the teacher that you know why don't you let her lead the team lead her class and and it happened he 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 observed me and he thought i was really good and then i was allowed to lead the class and it boosted my confidence on another level altogether because i thought that somebody here trusts me 
and then the way i showed up throughout my school was way different so it was at that age that i realized having a mentor who 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 sees you in a different light who knows more about what they're doing you don't know at that stage it it serves you in the best possible way you will expand your comfort zone more than you would have done it by yourself so all through the school life all through my college life i always had these uh these amazing teachers at that point they were teachers or seniors who would give guidance and i would i wouldn't question it okay. uh when 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 you know i would i would observe i would see what is relevant to me and uh, work towards it but i had no shame whatsoever in in saying this is where i want i'm struggling this is where i need to go what is it that you're doing about it so i was always very expressive and connected to people like that um and because they the kind of uh the kind of experience i got through them i knew that i could give it to others so so it was again a chain reaction uh then you give it to someone else and you see that they are doing the same thing for someone else so it started in way early but mm-hmm. when you said about coaching especially about coaching i didn't want to get into an industry and although i have the natural skills i knew i had the natural skills but there's always more education that you need around it you always i think you're better prepared when you get a uh, a structured education and you know uh, people who have spent time in the industry what is it that they do how you can get better in the craft um and that's the reason why i said you know i have to invest in my education and surround myself with people who do the same things and learn from from the best so yeah amazing amazing so you know be curious ask questions uh, you know uh, and con- constant looking around and learning from the things that are coming on on your way and ultimately that will help you find what your soul is looking for am i right <laughs> absolutely absolutely because you know uh, dr vijay that uh, passion is such a key buzz word now mm-hmm. it wasn't back then it really wasn't back then when we we were in school and right. college but but you could still see that some people exuberate that passion mm-hmm. uh, and that is attractive the passion is attractive you you can see that they have that light within and you mm-hmm. want it mm-hmm. um but i i always say that it's it's maybe some people are born knowing what their passion is and some people take time but it's a journey it's a different journey as far as you don't stop looking for it uh as far as you you know you keep doing the work that you're supposed to do you will you will get there yes so true you know i can and you know so closely relate to whatever you are sharing vandana and it's such a deep insight vandana i uh, you know uh, would like to know more about the kind of work that you do around conscious living and uh, how the uh, people who are listening to this podcast and viewing it on the youtube get really relate to what is all about conscious living and what they need to do uh, to have the best in their lives mm. sure thank you so much for that question dr vijayata um about conscious living you know this is uh, again consciousness conscious living these are all fairly new terms uh, that are being thrown around but i mean it has been there in our in our eastern studies it has always been a part of basically it's in line with mindfulness it's in line with being aware of who you truly are um, you know who we are keeps changing with time uh, we are constantly evolving we are in line with everything else that nature is so we are constantly evolving uh, but at you know the way we are born we are born with certain qualities which are innate in us um, and then we learn behavior from our big people the big people around us that is our family friends our care our caregivers um, when we are kids all you know we are born with this self love mm-hmm. we have immense love for ourselves and we want to survive yeah. so we 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 learn behavior we observe and we see what is best for me to survive mm-hmm. and we pick up on those traits now as we pick up on that traits that start becoming our beliefs our you know the our way of thinking our thought patterns are based on whatever we have gained while we were uh, looking to survive and then we transition into becoming adults and we act, not a lot of people question where those beliefs came from yeah. why they have a certain pattern of thinking they just keep following Mm-hmm. they just keep following the the trail whatever they've picked mm-hmm. but consciousness or conscious living is actually questioning 
yourself right. who am i today what are my beliefs what are my values this thing that i am holding on to does it serve me or not um do i need to what what made me start on this belief in the first place mm-hmm. um and i do i even still believe that you know because there's so much of inner conflict and anxiety that builds in because we are changing and yet we we are holding on to beliefs that were just ingrained in us up through through someone else mm-hmm. and through probably the environment you know when you're a kid you don't know what belief you're forming you know a parent might have just stepped out of the room and you find yourself alone in the bed and you say nobody is there for me you just made a meaning out of nothing it's not that it's not true but you might have made a meaning like that so asking what what had formed those beliefs do those beliefs serve me even today who am i today what is it that i value what is the kind of life i want to create um, that is also a conscious choice you know they, there is one belief that says you know fate is decided everything is happens it has already happened of you know maybe maybe it is true but if 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 we go by that belief then what's the point of living what are we doing really can we just sit and life will happen that won't happen so consciously choosing uh, or allowing yourself to see what do you want to create for yourself in the life and then aligning yourself and tapping into all of us have uh, all the resourcefulness really within us but what are we tapping into are we just doing things that life expects us to do or are we you know looking within and bringing everything that we have mm-hmm. um so tap into those resourcefulness and create the life of, that you want for yourself that is what i call conscious living and conscious leadership which is loving yourself not in a not in a how do i say um i'm i'm falling short of word but not in a pretentious way loving yourself saying you know i i i know i don't know everything yet but i'm there by myself i'm there by my side while i take this path and i trust myself that i'll be able to manage myself mm-hmm. and create this life that i want for me and for my loved ones so that's what that's what is conscious living for me this is such a you know in depth insight which you have given but no but you know at times what i feel when i uh, am approached by so many people and i see that they really want to change but they cannot take that first step towards that change because that is difficult that step mm. is difficult mm. so how to help people break that patterns which are built through the con you know uh, so much of uh, backgrounds that uh, different backgrounds that we come from how to help them break those patterns and take that first step of self love what mm-hmm. are your views on this sure sure that's such an empowering question dr vijayata um what i see is yes as you mentioned the first step is always the biggest problem the biggest challenge uh, but whenever anyone wants to start in this journey i always say to all the clients that i work with that let's not get into it i always have a free first discussion 30 minutes call and i say that let's not get into it if you're not ready you know you have to be committed to this journey first of all uh, unless you're 100% committed it's not going to change is not going to happen no one can force into force change on to you you must be self uh, ready to make that change now then you have those people that you said that who are ready to who want to make that change who just don't know how mm-hmm. now i think we all you know all of us still have those the kids that we were in the old age we still have those kids inside of us and with kids it's always that if you can explain them objectively why you know why something happened then they might think of or even consider changing wow. or you know having a new perspective so it all comes down to showing our clients who are not ready to take the take the plunge that what is holding them back mm-hmm. where it all started from helping them just gain that awareness and gaining awareness doesn't doesn't give you change it doesn't uh, confirm change ever but not having that awareness number 1 and being on autopilot is never going to do any difference but now gaining the awareness once you have the awareness that means now you can choose you have a choice 
Mm-hmm. Now I am aware. Do I want to keep doing what I did, or do I want to do something else instead? Right. So the choice suddenly gives you that stand that now I'm empowered. Actually, I can do something about it, and that's the beautiful part about coaching, which I enjoy the most. That you get to be there by the side of your client and hold them accountable. I can, you know, I can, we as coaches can give that exercise that go ahead and take that first small step, nothing big, small step, and I am right here cheering for you, waiting, uh, you know, for you to complete that task, and then we'll take one step by step. and uh dr vijay i feel that it's with experience once the client experiences mm-hmm. that they they face their fear that small step they took it yes. and then they experience the change within mm-hmm. that motivates them further uh to keep doing keep doing and keep going further uh at the same time having said that there are also those people who take those that first step and they decide they don't want to go any further they say no i don't think i i thought i was ready for this i'm not Mm-hmm. because looking within is not always comfortable for everyone not everyone is prepared for that and then they run away right and which is which is okay too which is okay too you take your time mm-hmm. but know that there are questions waiting for you and you will have to someday answer them it's such a you know uh, i i completely resonate what you shared it's such a beautiful uh, illustration and uh, experience which you have shared that the person has to experience that transformation in and then as as a coach as a person who is helping them through this journey we are there we are there waiting for you to to yeah. you know, to walk the path with you yeah and and as you said the action has to be taken by the person hmm. uh you you know we as coaches we we'll, we can just show give them that awareness Yeah. help them see things mm-hmm. uh you know help their map of the world the way they see the world understand how they see the world and give a solution from that place mm-hmm. but the, the the action has to be taken by the person by the client because they have to as you said they have to feel it they have to experience it and so they have to act on it and it also builds the trust on themselves they need to build the trust on them mm-hmm. that they can do it mm-hmm. um and it's only through action that you can do that mm-hmm. Vandana here i uh, bring to you a question which uh, many people who realize that i need to change you know they they reach out they look for resources they look for some information which is present all around and they try to connect they take that first in you know from from inside they they get to know that yes that this is the time for me to change but mm-hmm. as a coach when we see someone that this person is not you know doing the right thing or or this can be done in this way or this transformation is required for that person what are your thoughts that should a coach himself or herself go and tell that person okay this transformation is required or what are your views on this <laughs> <laughs> it is a tricky state to be in and uh, frankly you know uh, when you start learning about all these things and uh, all the models and strategies and uh, observing behavior from a neuro linguistic uh, mm-hmm. programming perspective or a cognitive behavioral perspective right um, i mean i would come back home and talk to my husband at length and say he you just did that you just did that i just did that you know it's easy to um, start observing and suggesting Mm-hmm. uh but i i i personally would always refrain from mm-hmm. um because i mean you can i feel that you can we can always give examples and insights mm-hmm. um and throw the questions mm-hmm. but whether someone wants to answer them or when they want to answer them is completely up to them because i have i have had work with people initially i was doing a lot of volunteering work and i was also okay. taking a lot of pro bono sessions mm-hmm. and people would want to they just wanted to experience what it is like mm-hmm. um and then not do the things that they said they are going to do so it's 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 not just a waste of time for the coach but it's also a waste of time for the person itself mm-hmm. because they are not going to see the result and instead they might actually have new beliefs that coaching doesn't work Hmm. um so even to 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 protect the sanctity of the of the profession itself i would say that it 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 cannot be forced upon anyone um and those who are looking to change lo- looking for a change dr vijayta they can find it in 
in a conversation in a on a post they they know that they they want to do this and then they'll seek it and uh, be ready to invest invest not just in 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 money but it also invest their time and attention because all of this this needs time attention and energy yeah. um so yeah it's 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 a commitment it needs to and that's why i say i did a lot of pro bono work but now yeah. i don't i i i don't advocate it because a free a freebie is always considered as a freebie True. uh but when you, when someone gets to spend on and invest in themselves mm-hmm. it's a gift they give to themselves yes. they can actually go back and say you know what i did this for me i did this for me i invested in it and, and see i got the results so yes. it ends up giving them that self esteem that they took care of themselves even though they reached out for a service but they took okay. care of themselves mm-hmm. you 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 know you what you shared is so true and uh, yes the when the person is ready when the client is ready for that transformation only then the journey will be easier readiness and consistent commitment is yes. what is required from the client absolutely commitment 100% um you cannot be like uh, you know half here and half there i don't know you cannot enter this with a belief that i don't think it's going to work if that's the belief that you're coming up with uh, probably that's the result that you're going to get true yeah and everybody who is born on this planet is is very unique so how do you help your clients explore those hidden uh gems which are there how how do you take them through that coaching process i would like to you to throw some light on your journey how you handle them and mm-hmm. how the people listening to this podcast <laughs> reach out to you for that transformation journey for their own selves mm-hmm. share with absolutely <laughs> absolutely so um it is it is of course coaching is a conversational it's a one on one relationship uh, especially when you're going for one on one coaching um and usually a client is approaches you with a problem uh, which they think is the problem and as coaches we know that whatever is on the surface is not really what the issue is there's something more underneath it so yes. it's it's a it's it's a whole process of first understanding and getting very curious as a coach of about how the client sees the world mm-hmm. what what are their eyes like you know as you said everybody is unique mm-hmm. so not really trying to solve anyone's problem from what i would have done mm-hmm. that's not i always say that coaching is not about you coming to me and i i fix you first mm-hmm. of all i don't believe that any of us need fixing mm-hmm. uh we are all trying to do the best that we can do uh if we have not finding the or not getting the kind of results that we not we want probably we are not seeing things that way nobody has shown us how to think that way that's why so you've not done it yet doesn't mean you won't be able to do it so you know you first to erase that feeling that something needs to be fixed inside of me um and then getting curious and asking questions on how they see the world how they see this problem how they see themselves uh about this problem you know uh, and then understanding how that person how my client is actually thinking and from that point and when through the questioning um and there are so many coaching techniques that we can use there's dare model grow model um you know there are multiple models that are there which you can handily readily use uh to go through a certain structure and ask those questions and really understand the client's map of the world and from that place uh you know as you become them literally i feel i say that in a session that i've become you uh and then from that point on you start feeling that you as a coach because you are just being their external ears right external eyes mm-hmm. you can then see that why am i not tapping into i see so many different things here right here mm-hmm. but the client is not able to see them because they're lost in the problem and the thoughts so as a coach you're able to see that and then not not in a very boastful way mm-hmm. tell it to them or show it to them or tell them that this is what you need to do mm-hmm. but asking again through questions that what do you think about this have you ever considered this hmm. um what would happen if you know asking those questions that what if there was no fear in the world what would you do hmm. what kind of a life would you create for yourself giving them the direction in a way that they could think so it's all about how you are 
you know tailoring your thoughts mm. and we do follow through the coaching institute i'm a student of the coaching institute and we do follow this critical alignment model mm-hmm. which is a, a four step process so no matter what the problem is you always introspect that problem or investigate that problem in in four different quadrants so first one is the environment environment is knowing who you are what is the problem what are your beliefs about the problem and things like that um uh, who you are being basically is the environment then comes the structure structure is about you know what are the benchmarks uh what are the categories involved uh you know what all dimensions are involved in this problem whatever that problem may be then third is implementation wherein what can you do what strategies can be utilized uh what have you done so far uh what kind of results have you produced so that comes into implementation and giving a clear cut action plan on to start to implementing mm-hmm. and fourth quadrant is uh people so people is is knowing who other than you of course you but who other than you will be a part of your team while you're going on this journey who will be impacted uh who in future will be impacted or who do you want to create this for so investigating or going forward with the problem from all of these four angles is a holistic approach so it gives you a clear uh, structure and a clear guidance of you know what and then of course there are other um uh, neuro linguist nlp techniques that you th- go through and take them in the past do some reframing add on to uh, insights and and you know uh, give uh, positive empowering thought patterns uh, through exercises and helping them really see what's within them it's not really about anything to do about what's outside yes. it's actually to see what's within them and what they can create using that in in the outside world and how they can really contribute um in a meaningful way wow what beautiful illustration you have shared that how a person who is looking forward to transform his life can you know is taken through the coaching process step by step and re- making him realize that transformation on the go and become the best version of himself amazing amazing and a big shout out to vandana here and people who are looking for this kind of transformation which is deep inside inside out transformation please feel free to reach out to vandana her link would be there in in the description and uh, uh, you can connect with her and begin your transformation journey of exploring your own selves and become the best versions Vandana what keeps you going what keeps your momentum high each and every day <laughs> um i cannot i just cannot stop being grateful um that i realized it you know it took it took whatever 35 years to get here uh but the fact that i i finally found what is it for me um just keeps me going the fact that it can it has changed my life and the fact that i i i can actually i have actually created a business and i get to work with people on and the way i want to work with them and help them create that impact which is again create going to create a chain reaction where they can create an impact on someone else just you know it's it's it, yeah uh it just keeps me going there's just no other way mm-hmm. i cannot do anything else there's no other way that i can go on with my life and uh having seen and having felt the transformation myself uh the way i am able to be there for my family and the then the, the ripple effects of it that i see around us uh is also another motivating factor so yeah just just extreme gratitude for everything is is what keeps me going wow this is this is so so you know peaceful to to uh, see, you know listen to this uh, sharing of yours that ripple effect keeps you going and that uh, feeling of empowering others and transforming their lives keeps you to the momentum and on your toes each and every day <laughs> more powers to you vandana thank amazing. you so much <laughs> amazing you know a lot of insights lot of learnings from you today and uh, i thank you so much vandana and uh, you know we would have such sessions more often i would re- because it has been such an amazing time spent to you with you uh, today 
on this amazing podcast i and i know that viewers listen watching this on youtube and listening to the various podcast platforms would definitely reach out to you and they would have that ripple effect in their lives and they will spread the wings and fly high Absolutely. thank you so much vandana thank you thank you so much and high five to all our viewers and you uh, you know all the listeners uh, feel free to reach out we are right here uh, anytime in any way in the best way possible that we can help you thank you so much thank you so much vandana thanks for your time and pleasure connecting with you today same here dr vijayta thank you